oh, great job. I remembered that's the most important part. Hey, future people watching, welcome from past Michelle and MLUX. We're so excited to have you. Um, all right, so today we're gonna be uh, featuring a tech talk by Runway on creative tools and AI, but a little bit of background. Um, hi, this is MLUX. Um, I'm the only one speaking right now. Uh, I'm Michelle, I'm the founder and organizer, but there's a lot of people behind the scenes who actually like make this possible. Um, and there's so many more than just these bubbles. I really do need to update these bubbles. Thank you to so many of our community members who actually help us find really cool events, um, write them up on our medium, uh, tweet about it on Twitter. Just thank you to everyone who's made it possible over the years. We've been going for about four years. Um, so like, what is machine learning in UX? How I like to think about it is how we use data to inform and drive UX design decisions. Like um, data science techniques could be something like unsupervised learning on UI quick metric data to create data driven personas. We had a fantastic talk um, by Salesforce on that. So actually having the clustering of the ML algorithm tell you kind of what are the behaviors of your users. But it could be something too about like how do we design to let our users know what's going on with their data, how to make it more transparent to them, how they can get feedback or control of the system. Um, that's kind of like a large part of like what we're kind of thinking of and doing here. Um, I'm going to say a caveat to um, I'm using two simple words of data and UX. Uh, for those of you who don't know, UX is short for user experience. It is a lot more than uh, pixels on a page. Um, I would say I'm a UXer, but you could tell by my slide design, it's all in black and white. So you probably don't want me designing your app for you. Um, it's things like UX research, information architecture. It's really about like what is the overall experience? And so we need to really be thinking about that with AI and machine learning and data too. Um, I'm kind of boiling that down into one word, but really it's like machine learning, AI, data science survey and statistical inference kind of methods. Um, so all of that, um, including generative uh, machine learning and style transfers that we're gonna see today. So I like to say when these two combine, they can make really cool experiences like this. This is one of my favorites. It's Pinterest visual discovery tool. And so like you see someone scrolling and they see a pizza and they click in the lower right hand corner and it reseeds the search. and like. I don't know exactly what's going on. It could be something like, oh, you know, it has computer vision and it's able to be like, oh, here are three other similar images. Or it could be something like NLP based, which is like scraping uh, maybe the website and being like, oh, it's mentioning pizza or margarita or tomatoes or something like that there. Um, but it doesn't really matter because the important thing is the experience feels really nice. You are able to quickly within that uh, uh, one screen um, be able to uh, reseed your search without having to go back up to the little search box of our, of our current design and uh, have to articulate and type out pizza with tomatoes on a porch. I don't know, something like that. So um, that's kind of what we're talking about today. If you are interested in this and so much more, um, I'm going to share this right here in the chat. I've already written up a Medium article, so I would dive in and that's my favorite is including past talks from our MLUX community. So I've talked about the kind of discipline of MLUX, but um, our vision and what we do here at the MLUX meetup is really to create a collaborative environment to have those conversations and share ideas and best practices um, across uh, disciplines as well as across companies uh, um, and really just host a community um, talking about, you know, what are those best practices um, and how do we move the field forward? Um, I fundamentally believe that it's not going to be like one company that decides the future of AI and design. Um, I think there's a lot of really cool innovations coming out and I really want to celebrate that. And that's why I continue uh, hosting these for the last four years. <laughs> um, I will say we are on every social media you can imagine. And then some, ooh, ah, okay. So um, we're also on YouTube where we posted all of our past events and everything too, um, as well as Twitter, LinkedIn and our medium. And I just linked out to our medium before, but you can take a look at those links right there. Um, so definitely give us a follow or I don't know, if you see something cool too, always feel free to tweet at us um, or LinkedIn tag us or something too, because there's a small number of us who actually run it and we're always interested in sharing out really cool examples. The last thing is um, that I'm going to plug as well is the MLUX meetup cannot happen without you. And so um, if you're, I mean, I guess less sponsored than I've used, I don't know why I keep that up. It's more like uh, if you're interested, if your company's doing something cool and you want them to talk about it, fantastic. Or if you're just an individual who's really doing something that you're proud of and you want to share with our community, totally uh, reach out um, if you want to give a talk. Um, volunteers, no MLUX experience needed. Uh, we always need folks to help us with um, social media, but also just write up our talks afterwards. So that way folks like 
Uh, we have a new friend down in Ecuador. <laughs> um, we also have friends who, who watch from Europe or in all over the world. And maybe it's easier for people to read and understand this information um, than just watching a long video. So if you want to write a quick summary for a Medium blog post, fantastic. Um, and if you have cool tweets and all that stuff, always feel free to tweet us. Um, if you do want to email us, um, there is a couple of us at humans at ML mluxsf.com. I will also say I did not have the foresight that we would be outside of San Francisco, so the SF is important. I'm sorry. <laughs> uh, but have less. Okay. Um, very quickly, too, I want to uh, plug thank you so much to so many of you for donating, um, doing ticket donations. That's going to support uh, our larger feminist AI um, nonprofit. And we actually have a really uh, fantastic event that's going to be happening in person in our LA studio. Um, starting at the end of this month and going into next month, it's going to be with Gababaya. Um, and uh, so we do have a studio space in LA, as I mentioned, but we're also looking into um, asynchronous programming as well. So digital online programming. So if that is of interest, check out that bit.ly link that I just sent. And of course, um, the other details will be up on our Twitter and on Instagram too. Um, okay, now I want to quickly share, uh, I'm going to switch gears about like who we are and talk about Da, 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 runway. Um, I'm super excited because uh, I think, as I mentioned, some of you were joining. Um, I have actually uh, been a fan of Runway for about the last two years. Um, I have for a while, uh, I teach uh, a course on designing machine learning, and I actually would make my students create their own AI art. And I remember when I first used it, I was like, oh, this seems pretty intuitive. They're graduate students, they'll figure it out. Um, but I hadn't actually touched it since. And so I was, because we we're doing this event with uh, Runway, I was like, you know what? Might as well just try it again. And like, I bet you other people would want to make some cool like AI art. Um, AI art makes it sound much more approachable than like GANs or deep neural net stuff and all that stuff too, or style transfers. Um, so we actually did a tutorial with Feminist AI uh, with Anmal, who's on the line as well. Um, she's one of the organizers for MLUX uh, about like how to make your own AI art. And um, if you're interested, you could definitely take a look at the Medium article, but the TLDR, here are some of our favorite takeaways. Um, I absolutely loved um, having Animal on too because she's an illustrator. And so she actually hand drew a lot of these and having the discussion with her about like, what are your thoughts about AI being applied to your art? Um, this is her her beautiful um, oh hey Emma her beautiful illustration um, Monet ties and then uh, we also had another illustration of hers uh, applied with a mosaic feathering effect and like it's really interesting too to see kind of how it blends things together um, as well as like if you wanted to maybe update your profile picture to be AI ties ooh ah and some of the other fun crossovers um, with AS Curry. So um, it's actually not that hard. So I strongly encourage you to just explore it for yourself. Um, I'm super excited because Runway is one of the few companies that is uh, kind of turning uh, generative machine learning style transfers into an actual product that is approachable and easy to use. And you do not need to like run a collab notebook or hook up your own GPUs or all that stuff too. They've figured it out. Um, so uh, yeah, I think that's why I'm so excited to have them come and speak to us today about like, how did you design for that? What did that look like? How do you kind of bring these together? So on that note, I'm gonna transition over to one of the co-founders of Runway, Chris. Uh, Chris, we're so excited to have you here. Thank you so much for the invitation. Super happy to be here. Hey, we're super excited to have you. Um, I think now we're gonna transition over to your screen. Do you wanna present yours? Oh, I can stop sharing and then you can sure. present yours. Um, Let's start. Yeah. Can you all see my screen? It works. Yeah. Amazing. Cool. Um, thank you uh, again for the invitation. Super happy to be here and talk to you and um, show you a little bit more about Runway and what we're building. Um, I guess brief intro. Uh, I'm Chris. I'm one of the co-founders of Runway. I'm from Chile, but I've been living in New York for the last four years. Um, and this is uh, what I've been spending my time and life for the last uh, three and a half years, just uh, working and researching on, on, on Runway. Um, I guess as, as Michelle was saying at the, at the beginning, um, Runway was built on the premise of kind of like understanding and taking um, kind of like deep learning and computer vision algorithms and systems that are kind of like available today and trying to bridge them with the creative world, with artists, with designers, with filmmakers, with musicians, with people who want to explore those new techniques, those new mediums in ways that are approachable and easy for them to, to, to build and to use them as a tool. 
Um, and so I guess for us, that's uh, as a company and as a product and as a team of artists and engineers, that's always been kind of like the premise of um, what we're building. Um, and I guess I don't have to, I guess, give too much context on where things are with state of the art ML uh, today, but um, just in case, like, uh, as you all know, like ML has been kind of like advancingly, advancingly exponentially over the last couple of years. Um, and this is impacting a lot of industries, a lot of markets, a lot of uh, kind of like software. Uh, but in particular, the one we're kind of like interested right now is creative applications of, of uh, neural rendering, creative applications of computer vision, creative applications of NLP and text based and um, image synthesis, things that were kind of like really impossible or hard to do just a couple of years ago. Um, everything from like image generation to video understanding are things that are we, I truly believe, are going to change how we think about art, how we think about film, how we think about music and media in general and creativity in general. Um, another way of, of putting this into perspective is perhaps looking at the evolution of GANs. So GANs are a type of algorithm uh, that are good, really good at generating uh, images and high fidelity and high realistic images. Um, and the progress since they were first introduced in 2014 to like 2019, 2020, I need to upgrade, update this, this slide to 2021, um, is uh, kind of like mind blowing. Um, and it's a great indication of how fast the field has moved in this particular area. So whenever you chat with a photographer, with a musician, with a filmmaker, and just tell them that this is a capacity that now um, computers can have rendering photorealistic images at this quality with this fidelity and really easily and fast, um, people get really excited about uh, it being used in creative domains and in creative practices. Um, but here's what, here's where what, what I guess what we saw that was kind of like un, uh, different from, um, from the technology itself and how it's gonna, it was being transferred to creatives. Uh, for the most part, the tools we use as artists, um, I went to art school, I've been working a lot with like art and design tools for uh, a big part of my life. And that those tools have remained pretty much like unchanged and constant for the last few years. Um, and so I guess a realization that I had early on um, when thinking about Runway was that everything, everything here, everything on the image generation side, on the capacities of deep learning, of really transforming how we think about content, media, creativity, uh, it's not able to adjust um, in a good way or it's not able to encapsulate itself into the paradigms, into the metaphors, and into the systems that are, we have already built in our design and creative suites. Um, and so this, these priorities are kind of like rooting an old way of thinking about media and in an old way of thinking about design and, and, and creativity. And so one of the things that we ask ourselves often is, what are those new metaphors? What are those new interaction designs? What are those new uh, primitives that we need to design that allows will allow people, for instance, to navigate a latent space. Uh, do we need a new abstraction that will like emphasize what a latent space is and how you can navigate that? What happens when you have a system that can suggest, not just like react to your mouse, just suggest new designs as you continue to evolve on something, right? And I'm talking about 2D and 3D as well as like mix uh, media, audio, text. Um, those are the kind of like questions we're always asking when we're building products in Runway. Um, another way of looking at this is we're trying to bridge the world between ML capacities of ML specifically on creativity side, on the media side, on video and sound at the pixel level understanding and understand how to bridge that with a greater process. What are the interface and metaphors that would allow people basically to express themselves using these systems? Um, I guess we're here as a company and as a product to remind people that like these tools are just uh, primitive. They're tools, they're not the end to itself. Uh, they're tools and mediums that will allow people to take ideas and put them um, into a medium to express whatever they want to express, right? That at the end for us is like the main goal of every tool that we build inside, inside Runway. Um, and so, as a summary, I guess, we are basically building what we call the next generation of creative tools driven by this um, um, uh, approach of trying to bridge the world of ML, deep learning, and creative tools. Um, we have, at the moment, two products. Uh, there's two different like aspects of the platform. One is a more experimental ML hub uh, called ML uh, Lab that allows anyone with or without technical experience 
to kind of go deep into um, over 500 different algorithms. Uh, simple stuff like object detection and image generation are there, sorry, uh, and image understanding are there, all the way up to like uh, image segment, image generation and video generation as well. Uh, everything is built um, on top of a very simple UI and a very simple abstraction that I'm gonna, um, I hopefully I'm gonna have a few minutes to demo and, um, and show you. Um, and this is already being used by hundreds of artists and designers and developers around the world who are using it to explore, experiment, and understand um, ways of using ML in creative domains. Um, and we also have a more professional product that utilizes some of the core components behind the ML lab and abstracts them at a higher level, specifically at a video kind of like level. And so what we've done here is we've taken um, a bunch of the algorithms and primitives and metaphors that were rebuilt through the exploration side of things and the experimentation side of things and allowed a whole new range of creatives to use those um, in, an, in an interface and in a space and an environment that's already common for a lot of filmmakers. So what we're trying to basically do with SQL is reinvent, reinvent or rethink what filmmaking would look like when you have um, systems that will help you automate systems that will help you simplify and systems that will help you generate some of their content you're editing and creating. Um, we launched on 2020, like almost like two years ago. Um, and we're still, we're, uh, we're a small team, we're still in beta, but the product itself has grown um, um, really organically among uh, filmmakers, designers, artists, uh, creatives in general who started to use Runway, who have, who have also gave us, give us a lot of feedback on what things have worked, what abstractions and what interfaces and what systems we need to change. Um, and so getting and working with those companies and with those teams has really allowed us to iterate on everything on the product really fast to help serve those creatives in a, uh, in a better way. Um, at an infrastructure level, I'm happy to also answer, I'm just putting this here in case anyone has questions around this, but I'm happy to answer this um, if there's time for the Q&A. &A. Um, Runway itself, uh, the unique aspect of it is that we're trying to simplify the deployment and the utilization of models in, in, um, in the cloud. And so we build and we have a large GPU cluster that allows anyone to run models in the platform using a very simple like abstraction in the UI level. And if you want to go deeper, there's like a Python SDK and a, a set of primitives that will allow you to run things programmatically via an NPI and endpoints. And so we have both abstractions that allow people with very uh, good amount of technical knowledge to go deeper and uh, explore the platform, but also um, creatives with non-technical knowledge or non-coding experience to also get the most out of this platform, this kind of like rendering and GPU capacities on the cloud. Um, I can speak a lot more. I think I, I know I'm very passionate about this and I, I can always keep on like talking more about Runway and uh, the origins and kind of like what we're building. But I think a, a, a great way of like, just like showing you some of the things we're working on is just like give you a quick demo of, of the product itself. Um, Michelle, we're still on time, right? Oh my gosh, we are great on time. Um, I think a demo is the best way to explore it too. Um, huh? Because it's like, this is cool and I'm following you, but like, what does it look like? Like, how do we actually make things? Totally. Uh, so Runway lives on Runway ML, as I was telling you before, it's a um, um, web platform um, that has a backend and a GPU uh, rendering system that allows you to render and um, edit things in real time. Um, there's no need to download anything. So that's, a, that's the first thing I guess I would mention. Once you have an account, um, as I was mentioning before, there are two parts of the product the ML lab side of things on SQL. Um, I'll start with ML lab. Um, ML lab is, Michelle, I think you were playing with this like just a few days ago, um, but this is a large collection of ML models uh, that are open for anyone to explore in a very simple UI and uh, interface. Um, you can add your own models. There's a Python SDK uh, for anyone who's interested in, in using that, that allows you to take any Python model in TensorFlow, PyTorch, Cafe, whatever model you have, and just port it into a platform. And so you have, um, you can put it and then share it with anyone in the world. That's kind of like pretty pretty awesome and pretty um, pretty simple to do. Um, if you don't wanna port your models, you can actually just like browse around and see the catalog of models of things that are here. Uh, these are open source models. People can also port their own private models and like just uh, share them with their collaborators or teams. Um, just to show you an idea, um, let's say I wanna run a model that does depth estimation. 
I can select meet us. I can add this to our workspace. And our workspace is an abstraction that we build around running models in real time. And so every model is an algorithm that performs an operation in a specific, in a specific type of data input. In this case, we have an image input or a pixel input. Um, and we have, we're going to have an output that's also going to be an image, which is going to be corresponding to the depth estimation of that, that image or video. Uh, on the side, you have uh, the ability for you to um, uh, customize some inference options. So you want to see how the model performs under different variations or conditions. Um, there's also a network API uh, system that allows uh, not just to use this um, in the interface, but also programmatically through um, a RESTful API endpoint. So you can also use that if you're interested in building like web apps or plugins in Unity or any other sort of uh, creative application of this. Um, as I was saying before, everything runs in the cloud. So the moment you click run, this is basically starting out and spinning up a GPU instance. So you can run this, uh, this model in the cloud. So what I can do here is I can select an input. Um, let's say I want a file. You can also use my camera. And so you can also do real-time stuff with your webcam. Uh, for the purpose of this, I'm just going to browse through um, an asset that I have. I can do a clip like that. And so you can preview that video in real time here, right? Um, and once the model has finished loading, that might take like a few seconds, uh, you basically are going to start seeing the experts over here. You can also batch process experts. Batch processing expert means you can, let's say I want to get the depth of this uh, image or of any content that I upload. I can put the video into this a two hour long video and just process it remotely and I'll get an email when it's done. So there's a lot of uh, interesting applications of that, specifically when you're trying to process a bunch of uh, different images with a bunch of different styles or uh, transformations. Uh, while that is loading, I'm going to show another one that tends to load faster. Um, Actually, Chris, I, I, there's a question ahead. in the chat, if that's okay. Yep. So George is asking, um, you know, if you port your own models, does it run on GPU uh, hosted by Runway? And if so, do you know the port performance compared to Google's Collab? I will say one thing that really surprised me um, while you're taking a drink of water is that um, Typically, when I tried to make AI art before using Colab or Jupyter Notebooks, it was like extremely data intensive. Uh, I would have to hook it up to AWS or some type of other place with GPU uh, because my machine wasn't fast enough. And then on top of it, it, there was just like a lot of things that could possibly go wrong. I didn't own the, the rights to the assets um, and all that stuff too. Um, can you share a little bit about this? I found that Runway was super approachable and fun, which is my, why I made a tutorial, but yeah. Yeah, uh, so I guess on the uh, GPU side of things, yes, you can define, if you want to port a model, you can define how you want to run it, if it's CPU or GPU. That's just a YAML file that allows you to specify those definitions. It's a fairly straightforward process. And you basically, the way you build it is you link that model, the, the code of the model, to a GitHub repo in Runway. And so whenever you push new code to, to GitHub, it basically uploads the model um, and uploads and builds a new version of that. Um, and you can manage your version directly in the Runway. And so it's pretty straightforward for you to do that. You can also download the checkpoints or upload the checkpoints in all sorts of different files. Um, the system itself, when you run it on a GPU, it's running on Runway's GPU. And so there's a credit-based system that allows you to uh, rent those GPUs from, from us. We're basically renting those from like AWS. And so uh, we're paying those with, with that. Um, but the idea is that, that you can play with any of those models just by like clicking, there's no uh, collab initialization, there's no code that you need to run, there's no installation that you need to process, everything runs pretty much on real time. Like I'm running a Stargon 2 model train on a, someone training on a portrait, on a data set of portraits. Um, and so I can just like browse through this. Um, and we're actually, what we've done here is that every model has um, a unique input output definition. So that's also something you can define when you're adding a new model. But you see here, like this is a, this is an image to image model. So it's taking an image as an input and it's processing and giving you a depth map, high definition depth map of, of, of the image of the video, right? Um, when you're working with a generative model, in this case, uh, this model doesn't have an input as an image. Um, there's no encoding, it's just like a latent space. And so what we've done here is that we've created this uh, UI um, that's kind of like similar to a TSNI, kind of like dimensionality reduction, where we're taking multi dimensional vectors and like trying to like visualize them in like a 2D grid. And so we invented this system that's kind of like similar to a Google Maps kind of like interface where you can navigate, you can browse interesting directions and then truncate or change the different parameters to, to get into more specific details if you want. Um, you can also export uh, your videos. And so you can also export like using this model. So let's say I want to create 
Um, if you're following like AI art in Twitter, you've probably seen those morphing videos. Um, those are sometimes created with Runway. And the way you can create those with Runway is pretty straightforward. You can just like select the keyframes that you want. You select the interpolation um, dynamics uh, or uh, options that you want between uh, every keyframe and then click export and you basically have created your own Layton Wag export. Um, this is um, this has been for a long time, kind of like one of the most um, common use cases Wait, of how people before are Before you jump oh, in there, can I just point out like how amazing this is? Like this is like this is very cool for a variety of reasons. And I also want to say too, I know there are some folks in the audience who might be a little bit like intimidated by like, wait, what's YAML, GPU, CPU? What are those things? Um, I'm trying to answer some of those questions in the chat and stuff too, uh, as well as like share some of my favorite ways to kind of understand and explore this. Um, way, some things that I'd like to call out that I think are really cool about this are the fact that you already have so many examples in here is amazing. Like you are allowing people to explore this portrait gallery kind of uh, uh, workspace and the different ways that machine learning can interpolate or go between different images. Um, that typically, if I was coding that, that would be like really hard. I'd have to call each individual cell or something too. Right. It's not like an easy way to kind of look at that. And so you've made that super approachable. Um, the other thing is too, the, the way uh, that it's all documented is very clear about like, oh, here's like a couple of uh, machine learning models that, you know, you might've seen out uh, in the web or on Twitter or something. And now you can actually play with them yourself and upload your own image and see what happens with them. So um, these are some things that I really like about it. Uh, but yes, you were going to say too, you were jumping into something else. <laughs> no, that's great. Thank you for emphasizing that. Yeah, that's kind of like the, the something we're trying to build very explicitly is like to make it really accessible. It's all about making this technology accessible to a wider a range of creatives. So people and creatives without the technical expertise can also jump into the discussion and understand how the systems and these algorithms uh, can be used and will affect their creative practices and domains. And so that for us, again, has been kind of like the main definition of this. And, and the idea of like grouping models into different categories, making them easy to navigate and understand things for things that are, I guess, more animation-based, things that are still experimental, or things that are, I guess, more usable in professional environments like depth estimation are things that uh, we'll always try to make like it's extremely easy and um, and easy and um, simple for people to 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 play with. Um, there's also the ability for you to train models in Runway, and so training means basically you provide a data set of uh, images or a data set of tags or a data set of uh, tags that you, uh, images that you then you can annotate to train different types of algorithms. One to generate images, one to generate tags, or one to generate object detection models. The whole process is again managed entirely in runway and uh, training a, a model is extremely straightforward. You just click on there, you select a data set, you can annotate and transform and pre-process your data set as needed. And so I have a data set of shoes, for instance, these are, these are real images, you can go in here and crop them and select them and prepare them, which is like the one of the first steps and when, it, when, when you're dealing with ML, right? Just preparing your data set. Um, once you're done preparing your data set, just click next. Uh, there's a bunch of like presets and uh, configurations and settings that you can configure if you want. And then you can just click start training and like you're basically training uh, your own um, ML model. This might, depending on the data set and the, the, the amount of time that you set up, this might take a few minutes or a few hours. Um, just to give you an example of what a uh, model does uh, looks uh, once you're done training, uh, it's basically something like this. You get your training kind of like summary with like the fit score, which is a, um, a good representation of how well the model did with your data set. You can see, uh, we do transfer learning on um, the model so you can see the progress from different steps. So we're starting with a, with a model that generates um, images that uh, was trained on cars and we wanna train it on or retrain it on a data set of shoes. And so you can see the progress of how the model evolves. So somewhere in the uh, middle is kind of like a shoe car. Yep. Uh, let's see the shoe car here. There you go. Ooh, ah, I would drive that or wear that. I don't know. Oh, well, right. <laughs> uh, here you are wear it and here you drive it, right? Yeah. Um, that uh, that first has been the kind of like a fundamental piece of like again, it's all about accessibility. It's about a, about giving access to more um, of these systems to more people, um, to more creatives in different domains. To we have like artists and designers and painters and musicians and filmmakers who have understand it and have started to play with this algorithms in a very accessible manner and a very easy way. 
Um, so one of our kind of like latest efforts in terms of like updates has been the realization that I think when you think about accessibility, it's not enough just to think about uh, interfaces at this level of abstraction. Like this is this is great. Like people love this, but at the same time, there's definitely some understanding of, or some uh, technicalities around like what a latent space is. Why do I need to navigate through this thing? And like, what is this image being generated from like a data set or what, what does truncation mean? What's a data set or what's, why do I have checkpoints? And like, there are a bunch of like still hurdles or um, uh, complications when you think about moving like one step to uh, higher on the abstraction ladder and making this even more accessible to more people, right? Um, and so SQL represents like a different approach. SQL is we're basically taking those systems and we build um, a more comprehensive set of like creative tools on top of them. And so when you think about using those models for your particular use case, let's say creating video or creating images or creating sound or editing sound image or video, you don't have to think about the models themselves. Like I think that we've, we've learned that there's a lot of like fascination or like um, interest in uh, the models themselves, but at the end of the game, where at the end of the, uh, the at the end of the day, for any creative domain, for any expressive domain, what you really care is about your idea. And the models themselves, again, are just tools. Like going back to the slide, this is like, they're just tools. There's, there's a tool that allows you to tell a story. Um, and so SQL represents like, um, kind of like approach towards that. How do we start treating models? It's just like literally like expressive tools. Um, and don't kind of like over fixate that much on the models themselves. Yeah. Models are going to change, technology will change, and tools themselves should be on the surf of, of, uh, of creatives and their ideas. Yeah. So the idea here is that you can start experimenting with those models um, in real time uh, inside a fully professional like video editing and interface. And so let me show you, for instance, one of a few things that you can do here. Um, I think I had a video that could be interesting to show. Uh, let's roto, what should we demo here? I like the elephant. Uh, where's my elephant? Okay, let me try this elephant. Okay. Um, I have an elephant, right? Um, and so Wait, one- I gotta ask, were these already loaded in here? Did you have to add them yourself? Oh no, this is uh, all real time. This is 4K footage. And so we've, besides the ML side of things, we've also kind of like um, done a lot of uh, work on making things real time on the web. And so there's a lot of like web technologies, native web technologies that we're um, kind of like um, working with that allows you to do this in real time. So again, I'm gonna load this uh, again and you can see like it's pretty much real time. So uh, this is not like you are finding footage that um, you don't need to have, like the rights are Creative Commons or something like that too. So, so this is this is footage I uploaded. You can upload your own footage, but the ones you put it in, you can edit it in real time. There's no loading times. There's no oh, process. Oh, cool. Time. Fantastic. Okay. Right. Awesome. Uh, Thank you for clarifying. Of course. Um, and so what I can do here is like, I'm, I can edit this video. So if you ever use Premiere or After Effects, you can like probably, you know about like this, right? You can like just click things around, move it around. Uh, put it underneath, you have different layers, right? Uh, there are keyframes for every video. So you can do keyframe animations for position, rotation. So all the basic primitives of video editing are here. Um, you can also do kind of like um, a bit more advanced stuff such as effects as so you can visualize those effects in real time. You can have like anamorphic flares or blooms or blurs or violent contrast configurations. Um, like all of the things that you probably find in like a set of plugins or extensions in like any nonlinear video editing software, those are built directly inside here. And so there's also LUTs, so you can do color correction. So think about you're editing a video, you're editing, you're, you wanna tell a story or filmmaker, you wanna create a video, something, anything you can do with, with runway at the level, right? Now, where it gets really interesting, really unique is that besides those basic primitives for video, again, and thinking about the ML lab side of things, all those algorithms are going to be are ported behind the scenes of that. So let's say I want to segment this elephant. So I want to take this elephant, remove it from the, for, from the background, have it as a foreground object, and then do a composition with that. I want to create a hundred different elephants. Um, what I can do is I can go into this tool, um, and this tool itself was built just with that purpose in mind. So forget about segmentation models or video object segmentation models. Forget about the idea of having to upload a data set to reach on a model to perform specifically work on your videos. 
you can, we've done that for you, for you and we've given you an interface that allows you to do it in real time. And so what I can do is I can click anywhere in the video and we have a real time video segmentation model that runs on every single frame and allows you to do um, object removal, basically process in real time. So if you have ever edited video, you know that this is a very complex thing to do because you do it manually. But now we've trained a model that does it for you automatically. Um, and so what you can do now is you can save this mask and you basically now have a mask. The abstraction is you don't have a model that's performed something, you have an output of the model, which is a mask, right? And the mask itself is usable in any other, uh, like any other video. So I can, I don't know, let me see if I have a CD here, just can play around with like a position. Um, let's do something like this, right? Um, I can just put this underneath. Um, and then um, let me resize this, right? Uh, sorry, my Zoom interface is on top, okay, got it. Um, so I can do things like this, right? Uh, I don't know, I'm gonna put this elephant over here, right? Um, now I wanna duplicate that elephant and now Runway knows that that elephant is not, the video itself, as you can see here, is the outline is just that element, is they're not the whole pixel, so I can like do things like this, right? And create a bunch of, of this. Um, my, sorry, my composition and my videos are <laughs> not no the best. This is amazing. Look at all these elephants downtown. What are they doing there? That's great. Exactly. <laughs> um, and that's kind of the idea on, on, on SQL and on, on, on the idea of like moving models a bit towards like uh, a higher abstraction ladder, allowing more folks to, to use them. And so you can still, uh, one of the things we're including that we're going to be releasing very soon is the ability to you, for you to like have all the things that you already have in ML Lab directly inside here. So you can do things like you know, like uh, image generation and video generation in real time. Um, so if I want to generate a background of a scene or of a landscape evolving, I'm doing this kind of like morphing, you can do it. Um, and on top of that, you can edit video um, as you would in any other video editing software. Um, so for instance, one cool effect is you can do the same that I just showed you, uh, just to get a subject multiple times um, and play with it. Um, Happy to answer starting any questions, Michelle. I don't know. I can I can run I can speak about this for for all for for hours, but um, yeah, I know I mean um, you made this, so this is pretty amazing. I think everyone's mind is blown. We have some head exploding emojis and wow and super cool. Um, maybe I could start asking some questions that I'm seeing in chat as you like play around. Is that cool? Sure. That sounds great. Okay. So one of the questions that came up is um, can you tell us a little bit about the audio support or audio features in this? Yes, I have some very exciting audio updates. So audio support is here. So every every you can auto uh, upload um, videos with sound and um, also audio files are support for audio files coming like later in the week or next week. Um, but we're also adding like ML audio understanding capacities and ML audio generation capacities in the platform. And so that's also going to be part of like SQL as a whole. Like the idea for you to generate audio, it's going to be embedded in the platform. And the idea for you to generate audio, not just from like um, primitive um, close to audio generation as you ever use like Ableton or any other software, but also from like text or also from video. Um, like the ability for you to generate, let's say I want to add music to this video. Uh, the way we do it right now is I can go to like Epidemic Sounds or Music Bed or any other like library of sounds. I will look for something, I will match it. Uh, we're building systems that will basically help you navigate that process in a way more straightforward and like fast way and automated way. So you can have variations of those sounds automatically, either as like ambient sounds or music um, um, as its own. Um, so yeah, that's coming up. Actually, we have a, there's a research project. If anyone's interested, uh, we tweeted about this um, a few days ago. We're running a research UI, UX uh, interview process for a new, um, or a new audio model, if anyone wants to join that research interview. Oh my gosh, process, yes, share it in chat. Please, okay, yeah. I'll go find it, I will share it. Um, <laughs> but yeah, that's awesome. Actually, so speaking about UX UI, uh, we have some questions too. Uh, as you know, about half the audience is like UXers of some kind. So we do have some questions about like, well, what does this look like for you know UX researchers? Could they use it for like highlight reels or anything like that? What are your thoughts on that? Yeah, for sure. Um, I mean, it could be used 
for anything. <laughs> I, we've, we've, I have, we have users that started to use it to like record interviews and then edit those interviews and then kind of like simplify the process of like reviewing them after. Maybe that's like a, a good way. Um, I guess like we could go in more details about what the particular use case could be in research and yeah. in the UI and then see. I mean, I can also imagine too. So like, uh... As a part of like what I do as a UX researcher is like, oh wait, here's all the things that kind of like uh, the user might have called out, and maybe like to help connect the dots too, there might be some key points that I want to morph between or transition really nicely. I would love it for that. That sounds amazing. Yeah. Um, but yeah, have you seen it used in interesting ways that you weren't expecting? Totally. Uh, I guess the best way to get a sense of uh, of how people have been using it, just like look at, uh, we have like, I, we made a reel of like a collection of um, projects people have made with Runway. Let me look down here where it is. Um, like things like this, for instance, um, where you, this VFX um, editor, basically what he did was he wrote or he segmented the skater with Runway and then created a sequence of kind of like trails that the skater is leaving as he continues to like do tricks and you can see the trail. I freaking love that one. Um, the 12 year old in me who wanted to be a skater, uh, down <laughs> like freaking out over the, all the cool skate videos. Um, that's awesome. And also to, oh, so open call, if uh, you're interested, I just posted that Twitter um, and there, that Runway ML Twitter. Uh, if you have more questions, please put them here. One thing that I want to ask you about, Chris, is like you are the CEO of this. This is like your every day. What does it look like to work with your design team as someone like, I know that you're very technically savvy. You've also been in the design space too, but like how do you combine machine learning, AI, and design teams at Runway? That's a great question. Um, it's an ever evolving challenge, I would say. Like we've moved from being like one person to being like a larger team and we're like growing now really fast and being able to have really good processes and design systems built from the very beginning have been crucial. Our team is a cross and multidisciplinary team that can move from like front end design and like or front end from to back end to design itself, everyone I would say has um, a stay and an experience in um, building or understanding how important design is in the, in the process of building any product. And so that makes the conversation itself move um, way more faster because everyone understands that before we start putting anything to production, there needs to be a process of really thinking about it, it from a, a design perspective, both from a user perspective, but also from a product kind of like strategy. Um, and so I guess that for us, the, one of the main things has been having really good frameworks and processes in place to make that kind of like system robust enough uh, and resilient enough as we continue to grow. Yeah, that's awesome. And it's also great to hear too. I mean, yeah, maybe that's one of the benefits of being a startup is from a smaller company, you can literally turn to the designer next to you and ask questions. Um, also love this video that you're making as you were, were chatting along. Um, I also want to ask you too, because it wasn't clear to me when I was first signing up, how much money does Runway cost? What does that look like? What is, can I just go use it? Yeah, Runway is free to use. Uh, and so right now, so I'm going to move, uh, admit. Um, um, I want that to sink in for a second. Runway is free to use and it works in your browser. You do not need to like operate it through terminal or anything too. They are really awesome. They give you some credits in advance. Um, also, Chris wrote all of the documentation on uh, how do I get more credits once I run out? Because I read that after making that tutorial. So um, like yeah. go through your own stuff. Like, like there's one thing for us to like talk about it and like show you it real time, but it's another thing for you to make something that you're passionate about. Um, like Anne Mull and I did with her illustrations or the mashup that I did with the feminist AI and uh, Deus Curry logos. Anyways. Yeah, totally. So I guess the pricing thing, uh, Runway is free uh, to use. We also have discounts for students and educators. So if anyone here wants to use it inside, schools and educate and, and classes or workshop, we can give you all like free licenses um, with like, we have hundreds and thousands of educators using it all over the world. Um, and then for more pro use cases, there's like two plans that will allow you to get like uh, 4K support and like a bunch of things that kind of like pro and creators really care about and are willing to pay. Um, and the other thing I wanted to mention is like, we also have a small research team. And so I know there's like some UX people here, data scientists, ML engineers, uh, we're growing, and if anyone here is interested in working with us, uh, we have a bunch of interesting positions opening in research side, 
but also in the design and UX side of things. Um, and so here are all openings. And so if anyone wants to join us and help us continue building uh, what the future of creative tools should look like, uh, please take a look here. Um, where I did not know that you were hiring. Oh my gosh, so cool. Um, no, that's awesome. And we have a, a couple more more questions in the chat too. Like um, we have one from Noel asking like, how feasible is this technology for stream video? Like real time stream video like this? And we're seeing you do it real time, but like how is it getting close to that? We could like apply it directly like the snap camera almost like in the background for me. Yeah, I, I think we're getting there, like for sure. There's definitely some latency. If you want to do like real time stuff, like zero latency. And we have a, someone from um, an agency reaching out that they wanted to build a project for television in real time. Um, there are ways of like doing that if that's the need. It, there's definitely some latency specifically in inference. Like you're running a lot of pixels over a neural network that requires a lot of processing. So there's definitely some delay. Uh, but I'm sure that things will get over time. Just in like, a technological landscape like fast enough to make you able to run those things in real time. Uh, but this is pretty much like still um, almost instantaneous. Like I'm editing like these are four, 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 four 4K uh, videos running on real time on the web uh, for with zero latency. And my internet is not that good. I know this is amazing. And like I'm truly, I am so grateful to you and the team for making a tool like this because I think there's a lot of fear around like AI going to replace art and things that bring us joy in creating in this way. But I think that once you start playing around with it, you realize that it, it is truly like another medium as you're mentioning. Um, and you could see that too, through the tutorial we made for Feminist AI. Like, it's just like a lot of other new design decisions become uh, available and you get to choose kind of like, oh, which one actually stands out to you, but um, you're just able to make really cool things, so. Right. Yeah. Um, okay, so I want to ask uh, just a couple more questions and maybe um, while it was really fun to watch you share your screen, I'm going to take it back, okay? Yes, go ahead. Um, so uh, very quickly too, and just a reminder um, as well, I tweeted out a couple of uh, uh, Chris's key takeaways and stuff like that throughout tonight's talk. So definitely check us out on Twitter. Um, here's the link to one of them. But one of the things that I'm always interested in is like, um, right now, you have an audience of uh, folks who are just very interested in the future of AI, design, machine learning, um, UX. Like, what would be one piece of advice or or thing that you want to leave us with, uh, or guidance to um, that you want us to take back to our practice? Um, I don't know. That's a good one. <laughs> um, um, I'm not sure. I guess for me, one thing that I've always tried to embed in whatever I do and uh, all my projects is um, I'm not really following what people have done in the past. Like I try to use tools and systems in ways they shouldn't have or people have not think about or have thought about or not were not designed intentionally to be used in that, in that way. And so thinking about technology from different directions kind of like allows you to be more critical about use cases and how to deconstruct that and use them in other kind of like situations. And I always liked about that. I like about, like I have an idea of like how, for instance, for SQL, like for runway, what it should look like, but the moment I put it into someone else's hands, they use it in a way that I never thought of. And that's great, that's great because you learn a lot. Your assumptions are like either validated or like completely tear apart. And that, that process of like either validating your assumptions or figuring new avenues and new insights is fascinating. And so I always try to think about it also for my own practice of how do I think about technology and things from angles that perhaps no one has ever thought about. Um, I don't know, that's what I always think about. Chris, for someone who didn't have a prepared answer, that's a great answer. Um, I love that. I love that part of your practice as being an ML engineer pushing the boundaries is really just doing things that haven't been done before, but also testing it with people and just getting their feedback is like intrinsically um, part of what you do. And I think that's also a testament to the interface and everything too. I love it. It was really fun. Um, can't recommend it enough. I, this is really not a product pitch. Like they are not paying us. Like I just, I had a ton of fun. Um, Thank you. I want to leave time too for people to chat with Chris, not on the reporting. So I'm just going to quickly um, wrap up this event too. I want you all to know um, we actually have our next event um, with LinkedIn on designing human centered AI experiences, especially around the recommendation systems. That's going to be on August 18th. Um, and if you're interested, it's bit.ly slash MLUX0821. Um, and I just want to plug again, like we are so excited to get back into um, some 
uh, very much in-person programming with our in our studio space down in LA with some of AI. So check that out. And thank you to everyone who donated because literally your funds are funding like this uh, program. Um, so uh, check that out. And there will be virtual uh, versions of it too. And I just wanted to give a big thank you to Chris, uh, the runway team, like sincerely, it is one of my favorite tools. And I'm so excited to actually get a chance to have you all in and to say and speak about it and show us how it works. Thank you to Feminist AI for hosting this and all of our volunteers to make this possible. But thank you to you for showing up because we wouldn't have this event if it weren't for all of y'all in the audience. It would just be me and Chris chatting and like, that's cool, but like you all make it happen. So um, I'm gonna stop recording. And so that way we can ask Chris some questions. And if you want to plug uh, or come off of mute and video and stuff, 